I'm here with my dear friend Martin from across the pond in Austria. We are uh, we had so much fun last time that we wanted to keep going and start to explore today the whole issue of forgiveness and acceptance. And if you saw the the post for this uh, the, this Facebook Live. We use that quote that um, angers something like poisoning uh, others and um, or resentments like taking poison, waiting for the other person to die. And that's actually a lot more true than we realize, because every time you get upset, the funny thing is your body, it's like a pharmacy. It catalyzes about 1400 uh, chemical changes and 30 hormonal changes. And those are things that really are toxic to you. Things like immunoglobin A, which is a key part of your immune system, drops by 40 plus percent for six hours or more with every upset. The DHEA, which is a key hormone that keeps you looking young, drops by 40, 50 percent. Yeah, baby. <laughs> to to uh, uh, for hours and things like that. So it ages you. It, it it makes you sicker, so on and so forth. It really does wear you down. And and the thing that gets tricky about this, it's not just when that person upsets you or the driver cuts you off. It's every time you re relive it in your mind's eye, that same chemical change goes through. So what happens if someone upsets you? You tell everybody you run into and you relive it. And what you're doing is you're poisoning your body each and every time. And you really are poisoning yourself and waiting for the other person to die. So I, I thought we'd kick things off with that, Martin, your thoughts from there. No, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, this is, uh, and of course, you, you are the scientist of us too. Uh, and it, isn't the body an absolutely incredible miracle you know, re restructuring itself, uh, regaining its footing uh, all by itself, just basically. And let, let's be honest, what most people feed it, yeah, that's not the most ideal thing that you would, if you would think that, okay, this is the, the food, it's the fuel for your body to regenerate itself. And we are stuffing it with lots of carbs and fat and all that. And that's not very, very healthy. But that's only the physical side of it. And the, the, the fascinating thing for me is the, the connection between the mind and the body. So that uh, when we have a fearful thought, when we have a resentful thought, we trigger instantly the production of stress hormone, cortisol, uh, all, all, and many, many more things. And so that's why uh, forgiveness and acceptance is, I, I find in the work that I do with people, so important. And what is it actually? Uh, so forgiveness is does not mean that you become uh, as as we as we say in, in in German, you become the wash rag, yeah, so that everybody can can use you and 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 wash mop, mop up the floor with with you. Uh, absolutely not. It it and there is this there is the saying. I don't know whether you have it in English too, but I I can forgive, but I cannot forget. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. in English as well. And we go like, Hello. that's not forgiveness. It, that, that's not exactly. That's not forgiveness. <laughs> and it does not mean that that you it becomes obsolete or you you have to be be, be in denial about it. it. No. Yeah. But if you have truly forgiven, you have pulled the trigger. There is no trigger left uh, to really. Because if, if you say, I, I can't forgive, but I cannot forget, then each and every time it triggers you, then you get upset again. You relive it, and you, there's still a charge in you. And that is the, the power of the, the uh, emotional techniques that I work in the energy psychology field with, and, and also what, what techniques like the work do and so on, yeah? That yes. you, actually, you actually pull the trigger from it, and not the trigger in order to explode it, uh, but to for the trigger to be gone, there's no issue about it. There's you no can... emotional latency there. There's nothing yes. left in that. Yes, absolutely. You can still think about it, but the beauty of it is, and you notice that when you think about it, there's no emotional charge involved anymore. 
Right. And that is the that is the huge issue. That is the huge issue. And forgiveness is you have truly forgiven. And, and a dear friend of mine, uh, Dr. Sean Duperon, uh, has has uh, done a, a documentary on this called Project Forgive. Uh, it's it's very very interesting movie that will be released. I hope this year, maybe next year. I'm not quite sure about the date. Uh, but she tells the story in this uh, that a friend of her family was the, the family of the man, a wife, and I think two children were killed in a drunk accident by another friend of her family. So and then the two, how this unfolds and and how the man can came to a place of forgiveness because i mean this is absolutely a, it's a tragic co- incident in in life and these happen uh, there, there's there's no there's no fussing around it or there's no no belittling this tragic stuff happens absolutely the, and and i'm all for for a period of grief and and sorrow and and processing this but the question is are you staying stuck in there and what is it costing you? And that is where th- some things in life simply happen and we cannot do anything else but accept them. And at first we may rant against them and, and, and be in, in, in objection and, and be in, 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 in grief and, and, and sadness and all about it. And that is a natural process of working through it. But if you're still in sadness three years, five years, seven years later, then- or decades later. Even decades later, right? And and I've just I've just had such an such an interesting uh, conversation recently uh, with a young lady uh, who, when we explored where this this feeling of being being a failure came from, and so her earliest memory of the feeling in the, within her was like okay, she was like two two years old when when that when that feeling first set in and she has still had a memory of this normally we don't remember anything before four five six uh, but she had still the memory so that that was just a, a tra- tragic incident and she had done a lot of work on it to release it and still there was still a trigger in there yes it's and it's, it's it, we it, will, well, we'll that's where most of the stuff happens before we're five lots Lots, of course, of course, yeah. This is, and and the fun thing is, or it's actually not so funny. The fun thing is that we, by what we perceive, and and if if you look into early child psychology, um, a, a child has not yet a distinction between itself and the world outside. So anything that happens in the world is related because of them, is related to their own being, yes? And then when we decide on the truth about the world, so the world is a dangerous place. I have to be careful. I always have to be very proper or I always have to perform or whatever the decision is. And, and that's, that, that is a key point. In those, in those situations in early in life, we make a decision. And that decision, that's basically a promise. It's a vow that we say, okay, well, to please mommy or to, to be a great, to, to be good for daddy, I will always be X, Y, Z. And then 30 years later, we wonder why in certain situations we're still stuck on, on, on issues like that or we're still... We don't remember. The, we don't even remember that we made this promise to ourselves. In order for daddy to love me, I will always have to be X or for mommy to be good or for, my, for the preacher or the, 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 the kindergarten teacher or, or whoever that is, any of the respect persons or the, the, the close affiliations that you have in, in, your, in your environment at that age can be a trigger. And so the earlier back it goes, the more important it is to, to release it also on a deeper level because we can logically process a lot of things, yes. but th- this only gets us so far. Well, this is not thing to do with logic. I mean, if it did, it would be exactly. so easy. Uh, yes. The... the the interesting thing too to, to to add to that is that when we're you know we're we're little kids when this happens so we have no resources and and the interesting thing is this all gets locked in your unconscious mind and your unconscious mind never goes up it's like a 5 year old kid so it's only got the resources of that 5 year old kid desperately trying to deal with what's there or desperately oftentimes dealing with the situation from 
when you were little and and mirrors of that come up now the the other thing here i i want to put out here that that is going to be tough for some people to hear uh and a lot of people have difficulty uh, getting this it's it's pretty radical statement is that when you are upset at something you know if some there's lots of people who are doing things wrong and you know you need to take stand and take action that's fine but if that it's that fingernails on chalkboard which are just and you can't get over it right that that you can't it's never about them it's always about you and where, where i come to from this is, is again it's where that deep emotional content is and and people have a tough time with this because they say oh i'm, I'm nothing like them but it comes back to our we, we mentioned it last week our, our brains are inundated with information right we can't keep up with all of it our conscious mind only pays attention to seven chunks plus or minus two and there we've got a system in our in our brains that filters it the reticular activating system to filter what's relevant to us so if we there's someone that we wow we we really aspire to become we admire we 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 have such powerful emotions for the reason we do is because that we're seeing something some values they're espousing that they're living that we are actually living which is you know, it's it's relevant to us, and that's why we're attracted to them. Why why they stand out? Flip side of the coin this is what I call the mirror principle. Here is that those people, not just people that do things wrong. There's a lot of people that do things wrong, and I totally agree. You got to there are certain things you got to draw the line. You got to take action. But those that uh, get set your teeth on edge, they the reason that they have that emotional response is they are reflecting something that we have not yet had the courage to face in ourselves. So uh you know and people will say, oh I'm I'm not a bully like this person. I say, okay, maybe you're not a bully, but is there some place in your life where you're not respecting others? Or what I found often in the, my coaching work is are you not respecting yourself in some context? Are you bullying yourself? And it may, it's not a literal transfer, but it's the essence of what that person is. And yes. all of a sudden, that person that used to be royal SOB turns into the greatest teacher to help me see something I need to work on that I didn't see. Uh, and, and they've helped me to do that. And I, can, I can't change them, but I can change me. And and if it triggers you, it doesn't mean that that you know this is also something that that people often confuse with the with the term karma in in Buddhism. Mm -hmm. right? Karma says it's law, cause and effect, and th this is not just as what you just said is not to be taken so literal. Yeah, so because you threw somebody a plant pot on the head and they died, means that you will step out of the door and the plant pot will fall off the the the, the building and it will hit you on the head. Uh, it's not a one-on-one, -on -one, but it is it is the energy, it's the emotion that is involved. So if if you feel triggered by something and it, it really upsets you, then you were involved in something like this in some way or fashion. Doesn't mean that you necessarily were the bully, but you may have been bullied. You have experienced uh, situations of helplessness or anything of that where where your subconscious, where this 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 uh, like. This this fuzzy part of your brain that's that is responsible for the fight or flight response uh, just goes okay looks dangerous like that woo let's go and those emotions take you with you and what I what I want to what I want to add to this is that the more we are anyway already under stress the easier it is to fall prey to this uh, that is. And, Say and, more around that. Say more about that. Yeah, and that is when I've just I've just experienced this. Yeah, um, because my computer was slow, and I had to go on live in in two minutes. <laughs> and so the decision was restart or not restart. Yeah. And I could feel the adrenaline raise in my body, and and at that moment. I probably would not have been too accepting of, of other things or too forgiving uh, <laughs> because I was, I was in stress mode, right? <clears throat> and and this, this affects also 
all the decisions that you take in your business, in your personal life. In, in, and so in order to, to come to a place to really uh, work on things, then you have to get to a place of, of relaxation or calmness or, or de-stressing first. So uh, doing, doing some, some major or working on, on some major setbacks in your life or, or hurts or resentments or uh, situations that happened, uh, I, I always strongly advise people, get some rest around this before, before you start diving into this. Uh, so this is not something you do in a 15-minute coffee break. Oh, let's do a quick fix session. Oh, really? But we can't do a lunch, lunch and learn? learn. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, and, and that is also why, why many people also probably are reluctant to look at this, actually. No, I've got it under control. It's bottled up. Yeah, so it's stored away. But then, you know, the energy that you need to keep the lid on this, this is something that, you could use that energy so much better in being creative and being innovative in your business and in, in interacting in the reactions. I I just recently had a Martin. Just one sec. I, I we just had a thumbs up from Brenda, and I, I'm just curious, Brenda, if you can add a, a a comment on what the thumbs up was for. Sorry, you you recently had an experience, no, Martin. Go ahead. I, I recently had an experience of of working with a young man, uh, and and he realized. Uh, he, he had a public appearance and, and that was recorded on video. And when he looked at the video, he noticed about himself that he was all tensed up. And he noticed that this actually was a state that was actually perpetually active in his life. And by himself, he actually had the notion that he was actually rather uh, peaceful. So what, what I, what I want to uh, encourage people to that to look at things and say, okay, there is even more possible. There's more peacefulness there. Are you really sure that you are at this relaxed state that you want to be at? And yeah. I'm not at it at often, often myself. Absolutely. So that that brings up two two thoughts here, Martin. One one is that something you said about the, the 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 upset that you get that when you are upset at someone, you are in that stress response, and part of the stress response is that you shut down your brain because you know it's it's a fight or flight. It, you do don't need to think and have a debate. Hmm, should I run from the saber toothed tiger or not? You run or you fight, right? There's no so your brain is shut down. Plus all those fourteen hundred chemical poisons that I said going through your body, um, which is great for that instant of fight or flight. But yes. we've got nowhere to run in modern life. And when you are constantly, we pump these poisons into our body all day, every day. It's 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 so toxic. So that's one thing that that if you are not able to forgive, number one, you're poisoning yourself. Number two, you're making yourself resourceless, so you can't be present. Um, but where you said about the peace, now, forgive me. I it's funny that I'm the one who's from India, and I'm I, I'm more ignorant of the the, the philosophies of, of Buddhism. I've explored a little bit, but one one of the things that a lot of times you say in B Buddhism is about, you know, the, the acceptance of struggle, but it's also life is struggle, but, but there's also peace. So where, you know, can you explain that, 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 that coming to peace so that you're not living in that struggle, the lack of forgiveness, what, what's, what's the, what's, how mm. does, the, how do those two connect and how do you step yeah. out of the struggle because I don't believe that you have to live in the struggle and stay in the struggle. Yes. Yeah. So, so this this boils down for me personally, and and from what I've learned from from my teachers. Uh, so there are several layers again, but but just for for a simple practical layer is how real are my emotions? How true is it? And our our language is so deceptive. Because we're saying, I am angry. <laughs> actually, correctly, it would actually need to, to, to uh, we need to, we need to say, I have angry. Yes. 
because, because it's not who you are. It's not it's your not identity. Who, who I truly are. It's 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 why well, it's some chemicals in my body and and some emotions uh, cursing through through my through my brain and through my veins and and that makes me angry at that moment. But then it subsides again. So if you were anger, then you would not be anymore. So we are we are much more than just the emotions that make us up. Yes. And by that. In, in what the, 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 the classical reference in Buddhism is, is to the impermanence of everything. And that includes the emotion and that includes ourselves. And, and we take ourselves so serious because that I is... I never do. No, yeah. <laughs> so in, in a, in a uh, training that I did a long, long time ago, actually not from a Buddhist context, but it, it fits so wonderfully, is that the greatest, the greatest superstition And the, this is, this is uh, fascinating uh, because we have such a conviction that we are. Yet, if you look at the body, it, all the cells in the body constantly renew. So what, what I've read in, is, is that in, in, a, in a roundabout a, a seven-year cycle, all the cells in our body have renewed. So yes. to the person that I was when I was like, I don't know, 30, there's nothing there anymore that is still the same than when I'm now here at 48. And the same, and, and even more, if we can feel this with our emotions. And so, therefore, I love, I love the, the statement from, from Byron Katie. Uh, it's somehow funny that she always shows up again here. Uh, uh, don't believe everything you think. And I would, I would extend that to don't believe everything you feel. Yes. Because, now, but the thoughts then trigger the emotion. And in order to, to get this perspective, this is, this is one of the benefits of, of doing some kind of relaxation practice, be it meditation, be it autogenic training, or be it, I, I like the, the energy psychology techniques, uh, uh, Bring really taking some moments, do some qigong or what or yoga, or what, whatever it is, but where you are not in the treadmill, where you're yes. not in the rat race constantly, everything's pushing forward all the time. So, and that we all have busy lives. Find something that's good for you and do it. Start with a minute or two. The, the biggest thing is always to get started, to get, get your butt out of bed and actually do your <laughs> qigong in the morning or whatever yeah because once you start it yeah once you are in your running shoes and you are out of uh, out front uh, on the on the porch uh, then it's okay you are already going but this initial yeah. moment of, of getting going and therefore because at first we still have this point of conscious willpower that we have to to invest yes and, and then once you're going go, you you keep getting pulled out there you want to right. go yeah, and and if we can change this to a to a uh, habitual pattern, to an automatism uh, that we are, we don't think anymore, and this is, for example, the the technique uh, the, of of TAT, Tapas Pressure technique, uh, that that I uh, recommended last time already. In the last three years or so, I've done around a thousand sessions of this with with mm-hmm. clients and with myself, and I I love to do it in the morning, and when I wake up in the morning. Rather than grabbing my my cell phone, uh, my hands almost automatically go into the pose, and it has made su- such a tremendous difference. And I don't really need to think about it anymore. Or but are you still thinking what hand you use to br- brush your teeth? Right. That's so. It's it. finding what works for you, right? Yeah, and absolutely. and what is the practice that works for you that flows that is easy, not just what everybody else is doing to to explore and try and find what's right for you. Yes. I'd say so. So what if we were to move to the next piece about why is forgiveness and acceptance so tough for people? Um, I mean, I mean, we've described how toxic it is. And I, maybe I'll, I'll start it off by saying that it's, you know, the, all those chemicals, we get addicted to it. So if we're not in stress and upset at someone, we find someone else who's upset at somebody else so we can get upset with them so we can get our hit of chemicals. And I think it's not a habit. I think there's an addictive process where we are hooked on those poisonous chemicals 
and you know you have to in some ways treat it like an addiction and how do you overcome an addiction plus what you said about i am angry people take this on as an identity this is who they are who are they if they no longer resent someone or if they don't you know to them they stand they they don't know who they are without that and i think those are a couple of the big barriers besides the the what i mentioned with the mirror principle about what's going on with me that this person's reflecting so yeah. for me those are the sort of the three things that are make it tough for people to forgive to let go to move forward yes how about for you yeah huge huge issue um uh, what, what you just described that is why some people even uh, stay addicted to their sickness uh and because they have, it has become so much part of their personality, that they will lose themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've, I've recently seen somebody say, uh, who would I be if I wasn't sick anymore? <laughs> now, because they have been sick for such a long time. And that can be it's, terrifying. It's, it's absolutely terrifying. So th therefore, um, I think vision work is something very important. Who do you really want to be? And to get back to the place of, of inspiration within that says, okay, who could you, who could you be if you dare to be really free? Um, and of course that's scary because uh, we, we have, we have now 10, 15, 20, 30 years of experience being stuck in that place. But okay. Or a lifetime. Or a lifetime. Some... Absolutely. And, and we have, we have exactly figured out how to do this. It's not exactly fulfilling or exciting, but we know how to survive there. And the, the, one of the biggest things is, and that, that's really interesting, it's the, the fear of the unknown happiness is much, much bigger than the fear of staying stuck where you already know how to handle it. And, yes. Yeah. Well, it goes back to that Marianne Williamson's quote, right? Our greatest fear is not our powerlessness. Our greatest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. And uh, I think that does terrify a lot of people because then if you're that powerful, if you've got that potential, that's not the anger, that's not the being victimized. Yeah. And, you know, then we, you we have no excuse. Yeah. And, and maybe you've heard of, of kinesiology or the muscle testing that, yes, that some I have. people do. And Absolutely. We have we have actually um, I've, I've met a guy who was actually doing some scientific research on this. So they were they were not using just muscle like hand pressure, but they were using scales. Yes. To measure the, the the resistance. And when you are were in rejection or when you were in resistance to something, then you usually had only half as much power available as when you were in alignment or in agreement. And yes. the, the interesting thing was then in, in my work with, with Jack Hanfield in, in his seminars, uh, he was getting some people on stage and asking them for the, we had just defined goals, big, big vision goals, stuff that the people said they really would like to have. And then we were testing them on those goals. And they were weak. And they were totally weak. I mean, they were falling down. And uh, maybe just for a moment. Martin, yes. just for those of who have aren't familiar with it, what what this is is you basically put your arm out and someone puts pressure on that. You hold it against the pressure, and if you, and then you say something that's true and you're strong. But if you say something that's false, it's your arm goes down. So if I was say my name's Ravi, I could keep my arm there. If I say my name is Martin, I'd go, or I've I've done the thing where I ha have someone hold an apple here and they're they're. Um, their arm is strong or then I have them hold a coffee here and it goes weak. And on that, I think I'll have a drink of coffee. Sorry. You let you <laughs> yeah. And th this is, this is, this is, and this was fascinating uh, because when we are in resistance to something, then we have less power available. And this already gives us a clue why it's good to get out of resistance and not forgiving is actually being in resistance. Absolutely. Yeah? And, and but the the fun the fun thing that we did at that at that seminar so Jack had, had those people let let them work out this goal that they absolutely wanted they they dreamed of it was it was really and and they were burning for it and still the, the testing and whoop, yeah they were they were tested weak they, they had resistance to it and then he said something very interesting he said okay don't think about what you get from reaching this goal 
but think about what you can contribute to others mm. in service. Uh, what would be the benefit when you sold, uh, I don't know, 25 homes in the next five months? Not about the commission that you would get, but about the happiness that would you bring into the lives of people when they get their dream homes and something they can get, get a good deal and something they can afford or, and so on and so on. And suddenly, where 84% of people before tested weak, almost 100% tested strong. So th yeah. this is... This is this can be a huge thing. So don't think about forgiveness in in, some, in the sense of something like okay, I have to do this because then I will feel better. But also think about it in the terms of what will it contribute to other people? What is the happiness that will come out of it when I do this? And this, I think, this is true not only for forgiveness and acceptance, but for for many other things in life. Yeah. So maybe now is a good time to start moving into the how to forgive. If we can each share some ideas that we have um, for how to forgive that so that people can actually start to be able to let go and free up that energy. So maybe you, I'll let you go first, Martin, some thoughts. Great. Thank you. Um, well, the, there, there are several things. Uh, as, as I said before, I love, I love the, the energy psychology work because it also involves the, the meridian system and, the, and the, the body, the energy system of the body. And because getting the stuff that's stuck in there out of the system, it is really a relief. It's a release. Mm -hmm. And then it's much easier to forgive if you're not attached to the stress with it anymore. Um, and so uh, people can, if, if, can look at my... Uh, Search for my name on YouTube, and you will find some some talks that where I give an introduction to into those techniques. But the 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 key point is for for me is one question, and I think I, I already mentioned that last time. And that that question is: Do you want to be right, or do you want to be happy? And this is a decision that we have to make, and to say, well. If we want to be right, then we can stay on, well, this is unfair and, and how could they do this to me? And it's and life just is treating me so unfair. I just found happiness and then it was taken away. Or whatever how people think. They? How dare they? Exactly. <laughs> and and or how 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 did how dare God or, or whoever you blame for this. Oh yeah, let's blame God and let's because we're that important that we can Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, it, but, but I mean you know, the, the little child inside comes to funny conclusions about this. Yes, Rationally, we say, okay, well, this is absolutely logical. No, I don't have this and so on. And no, but the, the hurt little inner child in there that needs to be taken into the arms and needs to be cuddled and need to be held to the heart and say, okay, no, it's good. It's all right. And it will be good again. And yes. If, if it can help um, to... If, if you are of a spiritual mindset or if you have a religious mindset, then you don't have to do it on your own and say, thank you, God, for helping me to forgive. And just, you know, you don't have to release this huge boulder all at once. Just take it a piece at a time. And, you know, as they say, how to build the old pyramids, then they put a little pebble and they put another pebble and then more and more pebbles and, then the, the huge uh, block of, of granite there or, or a chalk stone or whatever they use to build it, where you say, okay, how did that get up there? Well, then pebble by pebble, they built up a, a, a like a construction that they could bring it up there. So it's the same for, for me for forgiveness. You don't have to do this huge thing all at once, but do a little bit. And because we all have, have this this need for instant gratification. No, if, if I work on this, it has to be gone right now. No. <laughs> oh, and yes. There's, there's this beautiful, uh, there was this wonderful person, uh, this amazing guy called Nathaniel Brandon, who wrote this book, The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem. And he worked a lot with sentence completion. And I, I like that. And he wrote, for example, and I like his formulation, he did it. He said, if I were only to be 5% less resentful, my life would change dot, dot, dot. And then write out five or 10 things, what it would bring you. Or if I were 5% more forgiving, 
then my life would be dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. And write five or six or seven, eight, ten answers that come, let them come from within. And you will notice that if you only decide those 5%, funnily, those 5% will not stay 5%. Right. It they, mushrooms. They will grow. It mushrooms. Exactly. So take it slow. It's okay not to forgive 100% right now. Uh, and use some, use some techniques uh, and work on, this, on the things when you come already from a place of relaxation. Get, get the stress out of your life. Because uh, you, you'll have this body-mind trigger reaction. And if, if your body is full, pumped full of stress hormone, it can't work. Or if your if you're gut, uh, I just learned something highly interesting about, about our gut, that when the microbiome in the gut is compromised, uh, then the villi, the, the things that actually pull the nutrition from, from the food, they also get compromised. They, they re retard. And 90%, no, 70%, sorry, 70% of all the serotonin, so the, the, the message uh, substance that keep, makes us happy, is actually produced in the intestine. Yes. So we not, also, not only do we have the mental body reaction, but we also have the body mental reaction. And, and oftentimes when I work with some people, um, I just ask them, okay, go to, the, go to the pharmacy, get some vitamin B for your nerves. Yep. It's also, it's also to be aware, take care of your body, which is, is the temple for your mind, and uh, also give a good nutrition because that can help you actually to influence then the energetic and the mental processes that you're going through. So it's, it's always a, a two-sided uh, process. Yep. Very cool. So from my side, there's a few things that I would think of. Some, some, the simplest uh, is a, a process from the indigenous peoples called the burning bowl, where what you do is you write down all the things that frustrate you about this person or about whoever is to, and if you want to, you write a letter to them. You don't send it. <laughs> but you write it all out, all the four-letter words that are going through your head, all of that. All of that vitriol, because if you don't write it out and get it out, it's still running around your head, poisoning you. So get it out. Then you go outside somewhere where, where it's safe, not too windy. You get a, um, a metal bowl and uh, in some place where things aren't going to catch fire. And you take that sheet of paper. You feel all of that energy you have going into it. And you rip it up and you tear it up and you put it in the bowl and you burn it. And yeah, just feel it. all of that going away. And then if you want to, uh, first of all, when the ash is cool, make sure the ashes are cool. At the very least, what I do is I take that and I throw it in the garbage. I don't even leave it in the house. I will put it in a plastic bag and go to a gas station and put it in that garbage. You can bury them. You can release them into the ocean. But it's just let it go. And it's just uh, the ritual is powerful. So that's ritual that's powerful. a simple simple way the second i would say is to go back to what i said about the mirror principle that it's never about them that they're reflecting something in you so it doesn't mean that if they're a bully you're a bully but where are you being bullying what is some aspect of that and this is really hard for people to accept uh because first of all because they say i'm not that obnoxious or whatever secondly a lot of people go directly to the whole thing of guilt and blame and they they think are you blaming me for it are you you know and i feel so this is not about guilt blame that has zero utility that's that that's pointless worthless this is about responsibility being able to respond and a response able and thing is if they're responsible for it you can't do a thing if you are somehow responsible for seeing it your reticular activating system is allowing you to see that 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 behavior and get upset by it you're able to control you and shift you so if you can find where are you practicing that behavior where in your life are you doing some of that and it may be to yourself if the person is is bullying are you bullying yourself are you holding yourself down if the person is being rude are you being rude to someone in some aspect of your life you change that that's under your control now the interesting thing i found here with the mirror principle is there's one of three things that happen and this this is really this is amazing number one you change you 
and the other person just goes on but and it's r maybe wrong that's fine so you can take action but you're not upset you're not triggered as you were right uh second thing is you change you and the other person disappears from your life it, it's weird like I've had that happen where I was, you know, I, I there was someone that, that I worked with who lived a, a, a few blocks away and I'd see them when I was home. I'd see them when, and it was, uh, and, and then I realized that there was a reflection, discovered what I was doing, changed that. All of a sudden, I never ran into them at work, never saw them in the neighborhood. And a year later, they moved across the country. Just poof, they they disappeared out of my life. It was because they were no longer a reflection, right? And the third thing, this is the weird one. This is the really weird one. Um, you change you. You don't say a thing to the other person, and they change. And I had this experience with my dad, who, who's when he was alive. He was a uh, he's someone who worries a lot, and I had learned that from him. And I, I had managed to diminish it. I've got enough Jedi mind tricks. I can turn off the worry and eliminate it. But I didn't want to do that because I was afraid number two would happen, that he and I would grow distant and he'd disappear from my life. So I held back and finally got to the point where I said, I, enough, I, I, I cannot live with this. So I, I, sh I did the, uh, deleted the, the worry in, out of me. And to that day, his worry didn't go away, but it went from like 98 to 40. Boom. That day, it just totally, it was really weird. Like he, he shifted and that, you know, this is where things get a little woo woo, but it's like, it's, it's also where it gets cool to, but the only thing you can change is yourself. And all of a sudden you change you you're not poisoning yourself. You're much better able to respond to what's going on around you. Um, and, and then the third thing you had mentioned, energy psychology, right? There's one that I've, I've trained in, actually developed in Austria uh, called Logosynthesis. And I, I can take you through something just to give you an example, because it's funny you use the word trigger, because that's what you look for, is the trigger that creates all those feelings of upset. There's always a trigger. It could be... A, a word, it could be an image, whatever, right? It, it could be a tiny thing. It, it always is a tiny thing. Yeah. And um, can you think of someone that upsets you? Uh, some, you know, and I'm not looking for someone on a scale of one to 10, I'm not looking for a nine or 10. Let's not go for the, you know, the traumatic, whatever, but someone who's maybe about a five or six. And, and the, the, the people watching can do this. Someone who's maybe a five or six and annoying you. Or are you just too mellow, man? Honestly, this is embarrassing, but I don't have anybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll go th through this uh, for, for the people uh, who are watching. If, if you can think of someone who's like a five or six, okay? Okay, let's and say that. You, you get an image in your mind's eye of that person, right? You could, and you can feel that usually, even without the person there. So that, right? So... What I got is I've got three sentences I'm going to get you to say, okay? I'll say them quickly, and then I'll say them slowly so that you can repeat it after me. And this okay. Is the, so <clears throat> the first sentence is I retrieve all of my energy bound up in this representation of this person, and I take it to the right place in myself, okay? So I retrieve all of my energy. I retrieve all of my energy. Bound up in this representation. Bound up in this representation of this person, of this person, and I take it to the right place in myself, and take it to the right place in myself, and just allow those words to work. Yes, okay. And the second sentence is a bit longer and it's i remove all the not me energy bound up in this representation of this person from all of my cells from all of my bodies from all of my systems and personal space and i send it where it truly belongs so i'll break it down i remove all of the not me energy i remove all of the not me energy bound up in this representation bound up in this representation of this person of this person from all of my cells 
from all of my cells, from all of my bodies, from all of my bodies, from all of my systems and personal space, from all of my systems and personal space, and I send it where it truly belongs. And I send it where it truly belongs. And just allow those words to work. Mm. The third sentence is I retrieve all of my energy bound up in all of my reactions to this representation of this person and I take it to the right place in myself. So I retrieve all of my energy. I retrieve all of my energy. Bound up in all of my reactions. Bound up in all of my reactions. To this representation. To this representation. Of this person. Of this person. And I take it to the right place in myself. And I take it to the right place in myself. And just allow those words to work. Mm. And what do you notice now? I notice more space. You know, there's this... And if, if you watched me closely, then you could see that there was like... Yeah. I could a, a, yeah. a breathing going uh, taking place and that uh, sort of a sigh and that is that is always a sign that there's some release happening absolutely this, this is what we also see when we are doing the tapping or we we're doing the tat where we hold that pose and it's always like take this breath and let it go and leave it out yes and, and it's 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 creating it's you you notice that that or what i noticed was that the tension here got less you know, mm-hmm. suddenly I had more, I had more, as, as this, as the saying goes so nicely, I had more breathing space. Yes. Yes. That's Isn't interesting. That's neat. That's yeah. a neat correlation. That's, that's it. And so, yeah. Okay. And so you feel freer, you feel re- more relaxed. You feel, you feel more at ease with, with the things going on. So it, the, the trigger doesn't have this grip on you anymore. Right. And so now that the check is, you know, the person that was a five or six, you think of that, where on that scale of zero to 10 are they now? 12? No, uh-huh. I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. No, no, but it's, it's certainly less. And, and yeah. in, in this case, I would say, I mean, it wasn't a five or six for me, but it was maybe like a three or four. Um, I'd say right now I'm at peace. Yeah. Once it's gone. Yeah. yeah, and even and a one or two is on. A, it's like whatever. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's it's but it's that simple. Is that we trap our energy in these triggers, and we trap other people's energy. And what logo does is it just lets you, whew, yeah, let that energy yeah. go where it needs to yeah. go in yourself yeah. or elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. As that that's that's why this is one of the reasons why I love the 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 tapas psychopressure technique so much because yep. it's it's. It, it is actually, I would say, the divine intervention that, that Tapas came up with this process. I mean, this is really weird because uh, it looks and it looks a bit strange. So don't do it in the car, maybe. I was like, uh, <laughs> on a, on a, especially if you're driving. Yeah. And well, as I always say with the tapping, okay, don't don't go tapping like this because in 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 here in Germany, in the German language areas, it means that you're a fool, you're stupid. Yeah. If you if you if you do something like this to somebody, then. But in the, in the tapas like pressure technique, uh, we hold the, these points here. I mean, it's like I take off my glasses now. Uh, we take the thumb and the ring finger, and we hold those like pressure points on the side of our nose, and the middle finger goes between our eyes. So this is the the one part of the pose. And the interesting thing is that when people are in grief, they sit like this. Huh. It's the same in the states, isn't it, or in yes. Canada? Yeah, so this is a natural reaction. We we just like, and this is actually holding acupressure points. They're coming back all over, and and we are we are by just by holding them, we are activating those those points, and they're releasing. Wow. And what what we also uh, now know that in here, in between, uh, is what what in in the Eastern philosophies we call the third eye. Of course. And what we are now as the pineal gland. Uh, which is the the intuitive center in our brain, and by holding those points, my my, it's my interpretation now, we we are activating that that position or that place in in our brain as well. And the other side of the hand is just going on the back. We just you just let them rest here easily on the on the on the back of your head, 
And so that is the, the, the pose that you do in TAT. And just holding, just holding that for a minute or two without saying anything, you, you can feel the release happening of, of just like the, the, the energy system relaxing. And then she developed a, a, a process of, of nine steps to take you to three different levels of forgiveness and acceptance uh, in, on, on different levels of your being, on, on your physical and your emotional. And, and then what I really like is in step eight, you make a choice. You choose, okay, well, if, if I, and that we, what we said before, what we talked before about was that the people wouldn't know who they would be without the issue they're having. Yeah. So here, this is the place where you can anchor in a choice that you're making. What, what would you love to experience? What would you like to see? And, and the fun thing is, Tapas says it so nicely. She says, TAT is not a process where you have to do or be or prove something. But it's just a process that you rather witness. Like if you're on a, on a, on a river cruise and you're sitting on deck and, and watching the landscape going by. Yeah. And I really like that analogy and because it's so simple. It's so elegant. And that's the same with the logo synthesis. It's, these are small things and they can, can do it. But do it repeatedly and little by little. And we're having a, a, a great result in it. And it's not rocket science. <laughs> it's not rocket science, and and still the 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 continuous practice of it yes. is what brings about the big change. Cool. So, Martin, it's probably a good time at this point to start wrapping it up. And for those who want yes. to find out more about you, they've got uh, your website up there uh, that they can uh, track you down on that at at that website. Anything more you want to say about the work that you do? Um, well, I'm, if, if you, this has been a hard process for me over the last few years. Uh, what are you really doing? And that was part of the crisis that life threw me in mm -hmm. because I, I was, I was Mr. Motivation and, uh, you know, I was talking about success principles and, and stuff like that. And life kept showing me, no, this is not what you are about. And until I really paid attention, of course, it only got my attention in a heavy crisis. Yeah. Uh, but we talked about that last last time a little bit, and so when when you and I'm I'm doing a lot of different things, but what what it boils all down to is helping people getting whole again. Hmm. So be it on a physical level uh, with nutritional products that I've researched and and found great stuff in, or doing the energy work with the TAT, the really release stuff. Uh, the self-esteem work that we're doing with to to build up who you can can actually be and how you can show up as a as a full person that you were actually meant to be in this life to make the contribution that you are here for, and I believe that every one of us has a contribution to make. And absolutely, let let not anyone deter you from living this. Not yeah. not even yourself. Very cool. And that is why, I mean, you and I are so aligned. For me, my focus is uh, the way I've, I've described it, whether I'm working with organizations or I'm working with individuals, is there's a lot of people who just settle for what, in North America, there's a term that's come up called meh, which I love it. Teenagers brought it about around 10 years ago, which means, you know, how, how was your day? Meh. It, yeah. it, it wasn't bad, but it was like, okay, that's nothing bad. great. And, and we settle for that when there's yeah. so much potential for going, yeah. oh, yeah. And with organizations, a lot of organizations are just meh. I mean, I, mean, I was just reading the, the 2018 study by the Gallup poll, the state of the workplace, and 51% yeah. of workers are actively looking for other jobs mm -hmm. in 2018. It's, that, yeah. that's like, to me, that's terrifying that people are that disengaged and there can be such amazingly engaged workplaces that where people mm -hmm. feel like they're making a difference and it's aligned with what they're passionate about mm -hmm. aligned with their values so those those are the transitions that i focus on for individuals for organizations to both sort of go from meh to yeah yeah and and, and something interesting is i've i've been I've been invited to to speak to uh, HR associations, and just this year I was the closing keynote speaker for the, the association in Macedonia, and their topic, their theme this year was from HR to our age, 
So from human resources to respect for humanity. Oh, I love it. And I, I love that. That's, that's why I, I mean, you, the, and it, the, the associations are, at least over here, this, they don't really pay. But I, I said, okay, when I heard that, I said, okay, I want to be there. Yes. I've got to say something about that. Yes. And, and, and this, is, this is so funny because we are, we are spending like so much time in our workplace just in order to bide our time, make some money in order to live a life outside. It can't be. Hello. The, the, include this in your life. So that I, that's, why, that's why I despise the term work-life balance. Mm -hmm. Because there's life balance. Yes. End of story. <laughs> or or I, I will sometimes say it's not work life balance, it's life work balance. Life comes first and you know you balance yeah. work in that. Yeah, but I mean it's part of life. Yeah. Please also be alive at work. Yeah. You're not among cool. the walking dead. Yes. But that's another topic. Maybe we do another one on that. <laughs> I think that would be fun. All right. Thank you, Martin. Thank you to those who are tuning in. Thank and you. we I'm I suspect we're gonna be back at some point. I think so too.